Hey, what's up everybody? In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about five tips that you need to know as a beginner bass player. Let's go. Now, first and foremost, I'm gonna warn you, this lesson is not gonna to be too much playing at all, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of this. Hey man, hurry up and play already. Stop all the talking. So if you're one of those kind of people, you might wanna skip this video. But anyway, I'm gonna be giving you some valuable information that you would need to know as a beginner. A lot of questions that I get asked a lot, all the time, very frequently, I'm going to be answering in this one video. So tip number one. So the first tip is actually purchasing a bass. Uh, so what you need to know uh, when you're in that stage of, okay, I wanna learn how to play the bass now, so what should I go out and buy? So when you go to the music store, when you go to uh, whatever, your local music store, so you wanna get a bass, I would prefer that you start off with a four string. A lot of people start off with five, six, and it becomes harder for them to actually learn because it becomes overwhelming uh, just because there's so many more strings, and that's one more string you have to learn. But it's a lot simpler when you start with a four string. Even something just like this is a perfect starter bass to play with. You can find these anywhere, they're squires. Um, and all the things I'm gonna be talking about are linked in the description below too if you wanna go check it out. So this is a squire bass. It's actually an active bass. You don't have to pick an active bass, but pick one that's suitable, that feels good, that's in good condition, um, you know, and, and what meets your budget. I always say that to everybody. You don't need to buy an expensive bass to start playing or to even sound decent. Also considering when buying a bass, you wanna think about the actual fretboard. All right, so you see how this fretboard has these fret markers, you know, on the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. All right, so they have some like this. This particular one does not have fret markers on it, but it does have them at the top. So if you're kind of a visual learner, you wanna learn and you want to see the actual fretboard and they won't be there, but they actually have them on the top. Most basses do have the fret markers right on the top, but you wanna be conscious about that. If you're practicing in a mirror, I used to practice in a mirror too, um, just to see my form and my position. Um, if you wanna see the frets inside of the mirror, um, this probably won't be the best thing for you, even though this is an awesome bass. Or they have this kind of bass. The kind of bass with wide fret markers um, wider fret markers, they're not just dots, they're actual, they actually cover the whole entire fret. Now these are a little bit more unique. Uh, you won't find these in a lot of bases, but some of them do have the fret blocks um, inside of them. They won't be this wide, but um, this is just a, a, a base by Elric bases um, that he makes with these inlays, uh, block inlays that are beautiful. Uh, but anyway, that's that kind of base as well. So take that into consideration and keep that in mind. Tip number two, you wanna know the stringing of the bass, the notes of the strings, all right? So starting closest to you, you have the thickest string, which is the E string, the next string, which is the A string, the D string, which is the next string, the G string, which is the last string, which is the thinnest gauge string. Okay, so you don't wanna get too technical and caught up in string gauges and things like that at first, you wanna be able to just get your hands on a bass and just start playing. So the bass is tuned in fourth. Some people tune down a half step, some people tune down a whole step, but it's going to be tuned in fourth. So take for instance, the first string E. Okay, so you have the first string, E, F, G, A, tuned in fourth. The next string is gonna be A. All right, if you ever get confused, you just count like that, okay? Uh, next string, A, B, C, D. Next string is D. Okay, so you just wanna keep that in mind. Know what the actual notes are of each string. Tip number three. So this tip includes how you hold the bass, your posture, your right hand, left hand position. Okay, so first and foremost, you wanna have a relaxed hand. You, you just wanna be relaxed in general. You want your wrist and your arm to be relaxed. You want a straight wrist, all right? You don't want this kind of cupping of the, of the neck. You want a straight wrist, almost like you're holding a can or making a C, all right? Straight wrist. You want that finger pressure to go downward on the frets. And you, want, you don't want this locking locking joint. You see where my fingers kind of lock in and go the opposite way, uh, my, my joint here or my knuckle here. So you want, the, your, you want your finger rounded or bent. All right, straight, straight wrist is a relaxed wrist. For the right hand, you still want a relaxed hand as well. So when you pluck, I don't necessarily like to call it plunk. I like to, uh, like to call it pluck. I like to call it like pushing through or kind of pulling through the string because once you push through the string, you go through that string to the next one. All right, so you wanna, fix, you wanna pluck like that and start off plucking with two fingers. All right, so just simple exercise. One, two, one, two. And you can do that on every single string. That's just a great exercise to start off. Being a beginner, um, just something you can pick up the bass and immediately start doing. Tip number four. So with this one, you wanna figure out what to learn. What do I sit down and learn as a beginner? All right, you wanna learn and start off with the exercise that I told you in uh, 
tip number three, but you also want to focus in on some scales and arpeggios as well once you get ready and comfortable with playing the bass. So in something that I didn't mention in tip number three, you want, uh, if you're, um, if you're right-handed, you want your bass over your right knee. Uh, some people play, well, even sometimes I do play like this. Sometimes it's, a, it's an easier uh, posture, but, uh, depending on what I'm playing. Sometimes when I'm playing high notes, I'll put my bass on my left knee. But for the most part, my bass is going to be on my right knee. But anyway, so what you want to learn is you learn your scale. Most likely you're going to learn your major scale first and think finger numbers, think shapes, think patterns when you're talking about bass guitar. Um, that helps so much. Um, so you're not overwhelmed with the notes. Think about the shapes, think about the patterns before in... Um, Tip number two, I think I mentioned that the, the bass is tuned in fourths. So every string has that same type of interval. So just keep that in mind, take advantage of that. The bass, you wanna think about shapes, okay? So really quickly, I wanna do the major scale with you. I wanna do a C major scale with you. So if you remember this number, it's like memorizing a telephone number. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. Okay, so slower, I'm starting on the A string, third fret, third fret. So second finger plays that. Fourth finger plays the next note, all right? And it should land right within the frets, okay? Should land right within the frets. I'm working with the second fret through the fifth fret. So if my fingers land here, the first finger is gonna be for that fret, second finger is gonna play this fret, the third finger is gonna play all the notes on this fret, fourth finger, all the notes on this fret. Get it? Second, fourth, next string down, one, two, four, next string down, one, three, and then you're back to the octave, you're back home, to the same exact note. Okay, so very quickly, you wanna learn some scales and arpeggios that go along with that. You wanna know that, or triads as well, because triads is actually easier than arpeggios. There are three notes instead of four, or, or you know, uh, six, seven notes. All right, so the triad is the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale. You wanna make sure that you know that. Okay, so know what a triad is, know what an arpeggio is. That's where I would start off first to be able to learn. I know all of this stuff is going to come in context when you start playing actual songs and things like that, but that, the fundamentals is what you need to know before you can go further uh, with that. So last but not least, tip number five. Now mind you guys, these tips aren't in any specific order. Uh, I think they're just very important tools and tips to help you become a better bass player, especially as a beginner. Now this tip, uh, it hits home only because I struggled with this in the beginning, but don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it be a bass player that you admire, that you look up to, uh, especially nowadays with social media, you can actually get in contact with most people, uh, anybody almost. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out. The, the worst that can happen is if they don't respond or if they say no. So what, go ask the next person, or whether it be YouTube or anything like that, or an online educational community like DerekBennett.com, don't be afraid to ask for help. And while I'm on that subject, we have a video Q&A section to where you can post and upload your videos so you can get personal feedback from me. You can ask your questions. You can say, okay, Derek, am I doing this wrong? Uh, am I, is, is my fingering wrong here? How does my position look? Um, are these notes the right way? How does this, uh, this musical piece sound that I put together? Um, how does my bass tone sound? You know, things like that. Just some ideas that, you can, that I'm throwing out at you. But we have a video Q&A section if you want to take advantage of that. And it's highly recommended because I can give you personal feedback uh, versus you just asking me a question and I have no idea how you play or what your level is. But anyway, that's my advice for beginners. You have a lot of tools out here that'll help you, um, especially with these five tips, you know, the purchasing a bass, um, that part, the second part is tuning the strings. Uh, the second part was, uh, what was it? How to hold the bass, right? Uh, the fourth part was um, what, to know, what to know and how to play, what to learn how to play. And the fifth one was asking for help. All right, so I hope you got something out of this video. I know the guys are going crazy over how much I'm talking and how much I'm not playing. But anyway, hopefully this will help somebody because it helped me um, a lot when I first started playing. Um, nobody really told me this stuff, but I kind of thought about it along the way, kind of learned the hard way. But anyway, if you got something from this, let me know. If you have any questions, comments, take advantage of what I said before, the video Q&A section, uh, upload your video on DerekBennett.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible or write your comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear and precise, like I say, after every single lesson. And until next time, one more thing, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You also want to visit DerekBennett.com. 
the bass education community where we make learning how to play the bass fun while you're mastering it at the same time. So go ahead and check it out and grab you a free trial while you're there. Check it out, see how you like it. We got tons of material, tons of lessons in there. Uh, hope to see you in there. Till next time.